Hey guys, this is Sam, and today we're talking about iOS 11 Beta 3. There are a lot of new changes to talk about, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So first up, if you go ahead and swipe up to enable control center, you can tap on the flashlight icon, and you'll notice that right away that glows blue instead of white like it did before. And another small change that's been present in iOS for a while that I still think is really cool is that the actual flashlight on and off toggle changes whether the toggle has been pressed or deactivated, which is pretty cool. Also on low power mode, that glows yellow once again. It was like this in the first beta. Apple removed it for whatever reason to just be white in the last iOS 11 beta 2, and now once again, it glows yellow. It's another small change, but I really like the way it looks. And if you 3D touch on the camera toggle in Control Center, in iOS 11 Beta 3, you get this new UI that looks just a tad bit different than before. The options you have now are take selfie, record video, record slow-mo, or take a normal photo too. Moving on in iOS 11 Beta 3, Notification Center got a rework, and I'm a really big fan of how they've improved this over previous iOS 11 betas. When this was first introduced, when the world first saw the new Notification Center in iOS 11, it got a lot of mixed responses. There was so much negativity surrounded around this because instead of swiping down and just going to your notifications, you'd have to swipe down, it would take you to the lock screen, and then you'd have to do this weird swipe up to view any other notifications. It was really weird, really clunky, and didn't really make sense for anybody, unless you just wanted to go back to the lock screen and your lock button was broken for some reason. But in iOS 11 Beta 3, it looks a lot better. When you swipe up from the top of your screen down now, it's gonna directly take you to your notifications, and it looks really great because it's almost separate now from the lock screen. Like, it looks the same, the design is almost identical, but you don't have to keep swiping up or down to view newer or older notifications, and I think it looks really clean. Another big change in iOS 11 Beta 3 is that the App Store is now on Seed 2, and previously in iOS 11 Beta 1 and Beta 2, it was still stuck on Seed 1, so there are some new features in the completely redesigned App Store, and I made an entirely separate video on that before in case you haven't seen it. I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner of the screen, but the release notes for Seed 2 of the new App Store go as follows. So today includes three days of stories now. Content on the Today Games and Apps tabs will be refreshed in an upcoming seed, because that's been pretty stagnant and hasn't really changed lately, just because this is a beta and it's not a fully functioning and working app store just yet. Developers can use iTunes Connect to upload descriptions and images for promoting in-app purchases, and video and featured in-app purchases will be available in another upcoming seed. So not a whole lot of features in this beta, just a couple of small changes, but basically the App Store team is telling us that they have more changes coming, and they'll be enabled in future seeds of the App Store, like an iOS 11 beta 4, 5, 6, or however many other iOS 11 betas there end up being. On iPads running iOS 11 beta 3, closing apps works a little bit differently now, like it has in previous versions of iOS. So instead of tapping and holding and then tapping on the small X that it would appear in the top left hand corner of any of the apps that you wish to close, you can now just swipe up. And I don't actually have a live demo of this because I'm in a really weird recording spot right now and I can't update my iPad because I'm tethering off a mobile hotspot. Really crazy story, but just know that closing apps works by swiping up now and it's a lot better than before. Now, as with every new iOS 11 beta, there's also a ton that happens more behind the scenes with a lot of settings hidden within the settings app. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. If you go over to settings, iTunes and app stores, you can disable autoplay videos in the app store. So if you had a limit on your cellular data or you just didn't like videos autoplaying, you now have the option to delete that right now. And if you head over to your iCloud settings, just by tapping on your name in the settings app, you can scroll down just a little bit and you'll see a new toggle called messages. That's because in iOS 11, you can now sync all of your iMessages across your devices using iCloud, which is an amazing feature. Back in iOS 10.2, Apple introduced single sign-on for TV providers, meaning that if you had DirecTV or AT&T or pretty much anybody else, you could sign in through the settings app one time, and then every time you'd install a new app that worked with your cable provider, like AMC or HBO, you wouldn't have to sign in because your data would already be on your iOS device. When iOS 11 beta 3, they've added a big list of more cable providers, and even though those don't work with single sign-on just yet, it says that iOS will somehow notify you when that cable provider signs on, and then it'll tell you when you can use that one account with a bunch of other apps on your device. If you launch up the Files app on your iPhone or iPad and tap on Edit in the top right-hand corner of the screen, you'll see a new option for OS X Server if you have one of those running. It looks like you can now access those files straight through the Files app, which will be super handy if you have one of those running. In iOS 11 Beta 2, we discovered that inside of the Messages application when you enabled the Echo iMessage Send effect, the bubbles were now orange versus blue like in Beta 1, and it looks like that was just a bug as a lot of you guys down below in the comments predicted, and in iOS 11 Beta 3, it works like 
like normal with blue bubbles instead of orange. If we head back to Control Center one more time and 3D Touch on the screen recording toggle, which I think is one of the coolest features by far in iOS 11, it now says start broadcast rather than start recording or there's no record button like there used to be. I feel like that doesn't make a lot of sense because you're not really broadcasting anywhere except to your own device. So maybe that text will be changed in a future beta, but right now that's how it looks. Now, as far as performance goes in iOS 11 beta 3, I've been using it for just a little bit because it was just released a few hours ago at the time of recording this video. But I would say it's roughly the same as iOS 11 beta 2, if not just a little bit faster. It's definitely not a downgrade in terms of performance from iOS 11 beta 2, but it was definitely not that jump from beta 1 to beta 2. Beta 2 to beta 3, is much more slight and minor and something that you probably won't notice day to day. It's very small and things do tend to load just a tad faster, uh, at least on my device, but not by a whole lot. And as far as battery life goes, I don't actually run iOS 11 on my primary device just yet because I personally do not think it's stable enough if you only have one device to run it on there. So I would recommend using Caution if you're running this on your main device. I'm sure with each beta, the battery life will improve and get slightly better, but so far, iOS 11 beta 2 and 3 battery life is good, but definitely quite a bit worse than iOS 10.3.2 or iOS 10.3.3 just because all the kinks have not been worked out yet and it is still a beta, so upgrade with caution. If any more changes are discovered in this beta, I'll be sure to update the blog post down below in the description even after this video goes live on YouTube. And if you enjoyed watching this, it would really help me out if you hit that like button. I've been Sam, I hope all of you are doing great, and I'll talk to you later.